We all know that CLSI recommends we monitor pediatric and critically ill patients for the amount of blood we draw from them in order to prevent iatrogenic anemia, which is anemia caused by diagnostic sampling. Here's why. One study found that removing 10 ml of blood from a premature infant can be a 10% reduction in blood volume. Another reported that phlebotomy overdraws are responsible for 15% of transfusions to low birth weight infants. In Denmark, researchers reported that diagnostic sampling removes up to 45% of total infant blood volume. Lastly, the average patient loses 4 mg of iron for every 10 ml of blood drawn. The problem is that the normal diet provides 10 mg of iron, but only 1 mg of that is absorbed. How do we monitor blood volumes drawn from pediatrics? Well, there really isn't any protocol in the standards for that, nor is there a suggested maximum amount. So facilities are to establish their own mechanisms and triggers for interventions. To help assist managers in complying, let's consider the following. The total blood volume in a full-term newborn has been estimated to be between 80 and 110 ml of blood per kilogram of body weight. A premature infant will have 115 ml of blood per kilogram, and older infants and children will have 70 to 100 milliliters per kilogram. That means a full-term infant weighing 2.7 kilograms, which is 6 pounds, has a total blood volume of between 216 and 297 ml. Let's say the medical staff concludes that infants in their facility are not to have more than 7% of their total blood volume removed in any given period. That's not a recommendation, just a hypothetical. Then a calculation can be made of the maximum allowable whole blood volume that can be removed from the infant without extracting more than 7% per day, week, admission, or whatever. Okay, so far so good. However, anemia is all about red blood cells. So a better determinant would be the infant's total red cell volume. Not the total volume of blood, but the total volume of red blood cells. Normally, infants have a 55% hematocrit, but some have 70%. If the medical staff chose to consider the red cell volume as a more important determinant than total blood volume, they would have to take into consideration the patient's hematocrit and perform an additional calculation. So you see, it can get rather complicated. But tracking volumes withdrawn is critical to managing iatrogenic anemia. Just remember, if your facility is going to track volumes withdrawn as required by the standards, it must also establish criteria for restraint when those limits are met. Otherwise, the limits are meaningless exercises. Sure, red cells are replaced by the body's bone marrow, but only at a rate of 50 ml of blood per day, and that's based on a 5 liter total volume. That's why monitoring excessive volumes is important.